Hello? 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 Welcome to the week two of the race development log. I'm here to show you what I've done this week. Uh, and this week I've mainly done sprite art, some gameplay programming, and a system for pathfinding for the enemy AI that we're going to see later. So let's dive right in. I have colored the sprite sheet that you saw last week mostly in deep blues and dark colors so that you could bring about the the the, the, the characters that are going to run uh, that are going to run on the screen uh, 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 so the way i've done this is uh, i've just taken the old sprite sheet uh, and desaturated it and then added colors on top of it in gimp and, and tweaked those colors until i thought it looked good i've no expertise in color theory or anything, but this is what I think looks good. And we're going to see about the composition once I actually get uh, a sample scene constructed in Unity and I can see what I like and not. I also have made... Uh, I prototyped a new enemy for the game. This is the Nethood. He is a small, slender, fast enemy who is very cyberpunky and he has a little hood. Uh, so this is what I intend to be the main cannon fodder enemy type that you're, you're gonna encounter a lot of this guy early on He is Jumpy he is fast and he can get very annoying if posed in large enough numbers uh, And later on in the game you're gonna encounter him together with with some stronger enemy types so he's gonna be there to try to to uh, outmaneuver you while the stronger guys are readying their own attacks against you. And... I have started animating the main character, Raze, the titular character. Uh, so, so I've made uh, an idle animation and a walking animation, which you will see later when I show you the game. I forgot to animate the feet. Yes, it's very beautiful feet. Uh, so it looks like he's constantly moonwalking forward now because the feet never leave the ground. But I'm gonna redo that, but other than all, I'm pretty happy. I started making a jumping animation down here as well, which is gonna be just two frames. One when he's going up and one when he's going down. Uh, and the way I've done it is, I start out with my Game Boy palette, and I fill in a little bit as I go. Uh, and I highlight a little bit, and I just do all these sections, like the shirt and the mohawk and the pants and the arms. And then I go over and fill them in with the the uh, the correct color that I want to use on the uh, on the fields that have roughly the same brightness. I think I chose the wrong color palette here. Oh no, I didn't have the layer selected properly. But but. So, so I just select the skin layer here, and I go over and I fill it in with roughly the same brightness. And I hope this is going to save a bit of time compared to, uh, to, to compared to, just drawing this character from the ground up with the proper colors to begin with. So every field still has a maximum of four colors, uh, but but I trace it with one color and I add in the color later. So hopefully that's going to save some time. So, now to the gameplay. This is going to be the fun stuff that I've done. I've actually uh, done a level using the tile set that you just saw. And if I play the game... Yes, now the game is played, and you can see the idle stance. It's sort of like this Street Fighter stance when he's like... very low center of gravity, feet wide apart, and... Uh, yeah, and he's just rocking out. And if I move, you can see the very slidey walking animation. And if I jump, you can see that I have no jumping animation. Uh, but I have the, the physics and the jumping logic implemented already. I just use Unity's default physics system. And as for the AI side of things, I have done a... Uh, this is a little grid mesh, or, or, like, or like a... A graph of nodes that I made. I made I made a little plugin to generate this graph easily, so that's going to definitely save some time. I don't have to 
I have, to, I have to place these nodes manually, but I only have to bind one edge to them instead of uh, instead of going to both nodes and saying, hey, you're the neighbor of that node and you're the neighbor of that node. I just have to place an edge here and then they both know about each other. So if I, I have some enemies here, which I'm gonna illustrate, let's bring them a bit closer. So if they spawn here, they're gonna find their closest node, which is gonna be this one. And they're gonna find the node that is closest to the player, which is this one. And they're gonna go through this graph and find some, some possible routes to take to that node. So some of them are gonna go the straight path, some of them are gonna go up to the rooftop and ambush from above, and some of them are gonna go even further and ambush from behind. So let's see how that looks. Uh, ah yes, so it chooses paths randomly, so it should have been pretty evenly distributed, but now everyone just shards straight at the player, and the few of them decided to take the rooftop route. Here, more of them take the rooftop, rooftop route. So you have to fight off the ones that charge straight at you quickly before you're overwhelmed with enemies coming from all, all other directions. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of happy with the way the system works. It means I'm going to have to define this navigation mesh all over the level. But I believe it is, I believe it is time sufficient enough, or time efficient enough because I don't have to write a, a general purpose AI movement logic that works in all cases. They just have to follow this mesh that I've set up. And I can set this up so that their movement doesn't defy anything that the player couldn't do. So they don't, so that they don't, they don't feel cheated. Uh, 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 uh. So that is all I've done for this week. As for the three things I've learned this week, I want to first First two things are Unity Editor related. So I discovered these few things that you can use to extend the, the editor functionality. And the first thing is the Gizmos class, which I use to draw these circles and the lines in. I use them to debug where the enemies are and where the possible routes that they can take are. And the way you do this in Unity is you use this on draw gizmos method and this can be put on any object doesn't matter if it's a game object or if it's an, uh, an editor behavior so for each uh, node I go through and I set the color the draw color and for each subsequent call that's going to be made with the color green so I draw a green line from a position to a position in this case from a node to another node and it turns out like this uh, and the second thing, well, I, I just want to say this is really, really handy because it allows me to see without going through all the nodes and checking what their position are and what their neighbors are here to the right. Uh, I can just see everything in the graph or I can see the whole graph in the window. For the second thing, I've learned to use the tag execute in edit mode which makes this whole script run in edit mode, like even if the game is not playing. So what I've used that for is, uh, you can use this uh, pragma behavior, it's some JavaScript thing or a tag or whatever it is. If we're in the Unity editor, I go through all neighbors and I check with them, but basically, these are the two important lines. What they do is each node go to their all their neighbors and they ask them, hey, or or rather they tell them, hey, I have you as a neighbor. If you don't have me as a neighbor, add me as a neighbor. Uh, so you get this bi-directional relationship where if I add a neighbor to this node, let's just pick any old node that is not already a neighbor, this one. So now these two are neighbors. And this one will automatically recognize that this one is a neighbor. So you don't have to define this relationship twice, once for every node. You can just do it on either of these two nodes and the other one will automatically be updated. 
And that will save me lots of time when I designed this graph. I don't seem to be able to undo this now, but whatever. Uh, let's fix it later. Uh, and so the third thing I'm going to show you is not directly related to this project. So bear with me and I will open up the other game I'm working on. So this is RC Cars and it's a little big game about driving cars and shooting each other. It's a last man standing, so... I just turned down the volume a little bit. The... It's a last man standing, and so the you have a box, a little moving box that follows the leading player and stays at a fixed distance. So in this case, it's the now it's the blue player. So it stays a fixed distance from the leading player, and it always follows where the road is. So you may wonder, hmm, how do I do, I do this? You can shoot each other as well. By the way, I'm gonna just show that real quick. And so the, and so when the other cars now collide with this mover object, there's gonna they're gonna get knocked out, and then the leading player wins. <laughs> A little wonky there, but I'm working on it. So the way I've done this mover object so that it follows around the course is I use the Banshee GC curve library. It allows you to make curves like this or splines you can take each node and you can move them around and you can define how they're angled so you can pretty much set up your own path like this and i just adapted it to the standard racetrack that comes with the unity assets uh, and so you can get and the way this library in particular works is you can get the position anywhere along the curve let's say here, right in the bend, and you can get the direction that the curve is pointing in, which would be like top left. Uh, and you can also get the, let's say I take this car and I want the point on the curve that is closest to this car, it will get the point which is like right over here, perpendicular to where the car is. And I've used this to make a script that uh, it gets the position of the leading player and it puts the uh, mover object about, I think it's 20 units behind that leading player with the position and the rotation of the track. So that's been real. I'm definitely going to use this in future projects if I find use for it. I can imagine if you want to make an on rail shooter or something like that, it could be super useful because you can have the character follow a path really without having to define in code. So it will speed up development by a lot. So let me see. So that's it for this week. Uh, oh yeah, one more thing. I want to make, <laughs> this is stupid, but I want to make a shout out to Felix who is now currently my the only subscriber I have aside from my mother that I know of. Uh, so so he asked me in the previous video if I wanted to do another cracker review. Sadly though, I don't have another crack. I haven't tried any new crackers, but I have something of equal value for you, which is this Toro homemade pizza dough, uh, which is, you can buy it here in Norway where I live. Uh, we, it's, it's basically this mixture of flour, canola oil, salt, and some starch, which you add water to it, and you, you like mix it up, and it becomes this pizza dough that you can use to cook. You can use it as a crust. You just add topping on it, put it in the oven, and it comes out like it's, it's great. I can't even describe it. It, it, <laughs> it tastes just like if you went, went to go to the pizzeria and like buy oven cooked pizza. So it's great, I really recommend it. Uh, and also, if if either Toro or Captings are watching this, could you please send me a private message or YouTube or, or get, in, get into contact with me in some other way? Because uh, I want to know if you're interested in doing more of these brand deals, because I'm, I'm literally just subsiding on pizza and crackers right now, and I need more money to buy more pizza and more crackers. Uh, 
I'm gonna stop there. Thank you for watching and see you next week.